Here we are with the TV segment this week, Steve. You've been keeping up with Agent Carter? Yes. I've been keeping up with The Walking Dead. Oh, yeah. Let's go Agent Carter first. What do we got? What's happening? Well, Agent Carter is coming up to its major mid-season finale. I'm hoping that, because uh, they only got clear to do so many episodes. They said they are going to do eight, and they were going to spend the money for 16. Uh, it's, it's amazing. It's shot like a movie. I think it's... Um pretty incredible but she's been spending all this time trying to find all of the bad babies right so that Stark Howard Stark has stolen. lost okay uh, and it, it's just increasingly become more and more evident that other major factors in the world are finding these things to use against the United States one of them is Leviathan which is the big new scary monster of an agency out there, kind of Hydra-esque. In fact, I would not be surprised if there's a, a, a combination of those two. Do we get any intros to early other superheroes or villains? or? I think there are a lot of things that they've hidden in there that we're probably going to see some more development in season two. Pym hopefully in season two. You know, I hadn't noticed anything. Or Pym Industries or anything like that. But there are some references to industries and 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 machinations of other characters that I think are going to pop up. Um, All right, That's and I would I would like to see more of that because. Uh, I mean, like Red, I said, the show has been amazing. They think Red Skull's dead, and Captain America is missing in action. Any more on her missing Captain America, Steve Rogers? Yes, she has one of the things that she retrieved is the last vial of Steve Rogers' blood. Uh, Howard. Oh, Bucky's missing too, still. How, well, that's true. MIA. Bucky, Bucky was MIA. So uh, Leviath Leviathan's probably got Bucky right now. Could be. All right. Walking Dead time. Last last episode, uh, except for the one you guys saw tonight. If you're not a fan of the show and you just turned it on, you would think this show is the most draggy show ever because they literally were dehydrated, malnourished, and just walking very slowly down a road almost the entire episode. And I loved it because it was extremely realistic as to what life would be like in that environment. It wasn't, they weren't, oh my, his hair looks great and he's been in the apocalypse for two years. No, they all looked terrible. They all were barely moving. Um, Rick looks like Grizzly Adams now. Yeah, it, it, it was very accurate. The only part that kind of, you know, I'm yelling at the TV like I'm watching a football game is, I'm like, that's kudzu! You can eat kudzu! Eat that kudzu right there! It's very nourishing. But they don't know that you can eat kudzu because they're not really from Atlanta. If they were from Atlanta, they would have known you could eat the kudzu. <laughs> that's a really good point. <laughs> um, so that was kind of the only thing. And, and Daryl, you did see more of a survival instinct from him as he digs out some worms and eats those and he knows that's protein and moisture and... Uh, things like that. Still really great. Uh, and finally, there was a weather incident because we've been waiting for something like that to happen. And good, there was a good old southern tornado. What's worse than a good old southern tornado? A good old southern tornado with zombies. Not quite as campy as the Sharknado. I was going to say, don't say that out loud because <laughs> sci-fi will create a, a whole series. It wasn't quite that campy, uh, but it was pretty awesome. Uh, and then at the end of the episode, which you find out a little bit more tonight, uh, we meet a new character who's evidently been kind of following them. He's clean, he's got gear, he's healthy, uh, and it appears that he's there to help bring them in to a new group that is surviving and surviving well. But, well, now they are suspicious of him, yeah? Well, they're suspicious of him and he's suspicious of them. Because if you haven't seen their life experiences from their eyes, if 
this is how I, I say it. If you followed Rick and his group one day behind, all you see is him murdering people everywhere he's gone. One day behind the prison, there's just bodies everywhere. Look at all the people yeah. he killed. One, one day behind uh, Woodbury, just bodies everywhere. One day behind at the church, bodies everywhere. That's one really... day behind Terminus, bodies everywhere. One day behind Grady, killed people. I guess all of that taken out of context. If you didn't know it, they were all acts of defense or rescuing somebody else, you if you're one day behind Rick and his crew, they're a marauding band of murderous <laughs> thugs. <laughs> So I would They're be, good at killing. I would be pretty suspicious and cautious of, of them as well. That's a good point. Um, so, Walking Dead. It's going to be awesome. You guys already know Josh McDermott, Eugene, is on his way to XCon. He, he finally talked a little bit more. Believe me, there's going to be more with his character as, as this season wears on. You know I'm smarter than you. I'm not saying I know, but I know. It's going to happen. I just know things. All right, let's do a quick rundown of the other shows while we still have a few seconds. Arrow. Can you believe that? I totally cannot what? believe that. How about The Flash? Did not see that coming. That's, you know, crazy. I was warned it was going to happen, but Yeah, seriously. The 100. Whew, let's just say Richard Harvin's coming to XCon, and we're glad about that. What else? Oh, Gotham. Dude! What? Could, could Penguin get any creepier? Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. No, no, no kidding. That's the run now. There's no event bigger than XCON. I was doing my XCON thing or Ultraman or something like that. XCON. So, we've already talked about uh, Clerks 3. Not really. It was mentioned while we were talking about something called Tusk. Don't go see that, guys. Don't waste your time. Anyway, Clerks cast. We've got Dante and Veronica. Veronica. Right? So Marilyn and Brian, the the actors, half the cast of Clerks. I assure you it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Yes. And we are open. I'm kind of excited about this. They, are, they were hilarious in Clerks. They're going to be here. They were in Clerks 2. They're going to be here at XCON to meet you guys. And let you know all about Clerks 3. Another Clerks movie. Coming up, which will be starring Kevin Smith's daughter. And I hear Johnny Depp's daughter is also in it. Oh, really? That's cool. I hear they're the two main Clerks of Clerks 3. Oh, the next generation. The next generation, yes. Clerks Next Gen. Yeah, exactly. It's If Kevin Smith wrote it anything like he wrote Clerks, it's it will be witty and hilarious and I can't wait to see that that dry humor now with female faces. Will there be hockey on the roof? Uh, well it's two girls are the main cast so I don't know whatever their version of hockey on the roof is gonna be. They will be at XCON. You need to come meet them because it's awesome. Get some autographs. Yeah, bring out your clerk stuff. You know, we, we had the comic book men last year. We got clerks this year. Uh, We're circling you, Kevin. <laughs> We're circling the wagons, Kevin. Get close, buddy. Pretty soon we'll have all your friends and it'll be your turn. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, let's see. We've already talked about Josh McDermott from Walking Dead coming. We've got some other Walking Dead uh, guests. Not as big of a role as Josh's, but still important roles. Live 
Live guests. Live people, not zombies. Live people. No zombies. Exactly. No, there might be a zombie or two. They always show up at the end. You can't, everybody loves zombies. You can't get rid of the zombies. Everybody they're, loves zombies. They're zombies. They're hard to kill. They're great. Uh, let's see. Who else? Oh, did we talk about Blake is coming back and doing a karate class with yeah. the kids? Yeah, Blake Foster. Blue Power Ranger. Did we mention that we have the Pink Power Ranger? Aaron Cahill. I think people are going to be excited about Pink that. Pink Power Ranger. I know she was in Time Force. I don't know what other Power Ranger things she's been in because there's a lot of Power Ranger things. You know, until we started getting Power Ranger guests, I didn't realize there was more than one series of Power Rangers. Oh, there's a whole lot of Power oh, Rangers Oh, I know out now, there. yeah. 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 So Aaron Cahill, Pink Power Ranger, will also be at XCon. That's pretty exciting. Uh, who else should we talk about? Oh, we talked about Richard Harmon, John Murphy from the 100. The 100. Yes, he's going to be there at Catch XCon. It. It's a great series if you haven't watched it yet. All right, so let's give you something new. I think we haven't mentioned Clerks before, but let's give you this one. You ready? Nicholas Brendan. Uh, Who's Nicholas Brendan, you ask? Uh, he had a little role on a little show called Buffy the Vampire Slayer. He was Xander, ladies and gentlemen. Xander. Are you kidding me? From Buffy the Vampire Slayer Main in Myrtle cast. Beach. At XCon, this is happening. Coming people. to meet you, so all you Buffy fans need to get on out there and meet Xander. It's gonna be awesome. Bring your Buffy comics, bring your Buffy paraphernalia, bring your stakes to get signed. Your Buffy thermos, your Buffy thermos. Yeah, he'll sign it. He'll sign that right your there. Buffy Bam. lunchbox. It's gonna be great. There are more guests, but we can't tell you all of them right now. We gotta save something for later. Yeah, yeah. There's some. There's some. We're saving the best for last, for sure. <laughs> Excellent. We're gonna we're gonna be dropping the big guest bombs on you soon. Steve is dying to do it now, but I'm like, no, not yet. We can't just unload all of you in one episode. We gotta spread it out a little bit. Spread the love. Spread it out. Ah, some other exciting things. There's gonna be another XCon night at the ballpark. Yes, the Myrtle Beach Pelicans are gonna have XCon night on May 13th. That's a Wednesday night. We need everyone to show up in force, in costume, to support XCON and our charities, be cool. and to get psyched up for XCON. Hopefully the weather will hold out this year. Yes, no rain. No please. rain, no rain. Uh, Stop doing the rain dance. Beer, hot, I hear that's dollar hot dog night. <laughs> and now that the Pelicans are affiliated with the Cubs, I hear they're going to bring in the Chicago Dogs. Some real hot dogs. Nice. So uh, I'm kind of looking forward to dollar hot dog night with Chicago brats. Yes, sir. You know it. How many of those could you even eat? It doesn't matter. Get some and take them home for others. <laughs> Pockets full of hot dogs. We got dogs. some other special things brewing with the Pelicans, but we'll have to tell you guys about that stuff later. We can't. It's pretty awesome. It, it's pretty awesome, it's actually. Pretty awesome. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Uh, we got another uh, XCON night out at Medieval Times. Going to be happening Saturday night, May 16th, I think. Right? Maybe. Yeah. That's Saturday night. Another special event for XCON attendees. You're going to want to get your tickets for that. Uh, crown. And, of course, the Hang VIP the party nights. Friday night of XCON, limited to the first 100 tickets. That's Only you, 100 tickets, people. Only a hundred of you are going to be able to come and actually hang out with the guests of XCon. At XCon, right? That should wrap the event segment. Next time. Oh yeah! Yeah, yeah! It's the time of the year. Another XCon is almost here. Grab your money and log in now. Dr. Puff, we're gonna show you how Just go to xcomworld.com You already know it's the bomb Comic toys, games and fun Movie stars, anime, I'm not dumb Party concerts and hanging with me As always, kids under 12 are free You better get your ticks fast And save some cash Oh yeah
Here we are with the TV segment this week, Steve. You've been keeping up with Agent Carter? Yes. I've been keeping up with The Walking Dead. Oh, yeah. Let's go Agent Carter first. What do we got? What's happening? Well, Agent Carter is coming up to its major mid-season finale. I'm hoping that, because uh, they only got clear to do so many episodes. They said they're going to do eight, and they were going to spend the money for 16. Uh, it's, it's amazing. It's shot like a movie. I think it's, um, it's pretty incredible. But she's been spending all this time trying to find all of the... Bad babies, right? So that Stark, Howard Stark, Stark has stolen. lost, okay. uh, and it, it's just increasingly become more and more evident that other major factors in the world are finding these things to use against the United States. One of them is Leviathan, which is the big new scary monster of an agency out there, kind of Hydra-esque. In fact, I would not be surprised if there's a, a, a combination of those two. Do we get any intros to early other superheroes or villains? or? I think there are a lot of things that they've hidden in there that we're probably going to see some more development in Season 2. Any hate? Pym Hopefully appearances? Hopefully Season 2. You know, I hadn't noticed anything. Or Pym Industries or anything like that. But there are some references to industries and, and, and machinations of other characters that I think are going to pop up. Um... All right, that's and I would I would like to see more of that because uh, I mean, like Red, I said, the show has been amazing. They think Red Skull's dead, and Captain America is missing in action. Any more on her missing Captain America, Steve Rogers? Yes, she has one of the things that she retrieved is the last vial of Steve Rogers' blood. Uh, Howard. Oh, Bucky's missing too. Still. How, well, that's true. MIA. Bucky. Bucky was MIA. Uh, Leviath Leviathan's probably got Bucky right now. Could be. All right. Walking Dead time. Last last episode, uh, except for the one you guys saw tonight. If you're not a fan of the show and you just turned it on, you would think this show is the most draggy show ever because they literally were dehydrated, malnourished and just walking very slowly down a road almost the entire episode. And I loved it because it was extremely realistic as to what life would be like in that environment. It wasn't, they weren't, oh why, his hair looks great and he's been in the apocalypse for two years. No, they all looked terrible. They all were barely moving. Um, Rick looks like Grizzly Adams now. Yeah, it, it, it was very accurate. The only part that kind of, you know, I'm yelling at the TV like I'm watching a football game is, I'm like, that's kudzu! You can eat kudzu! Eat that kudzu right there! It's very nourishing. But they don't know that you can eat kudzu because they're not really from Atlanta. If they were from Atlanta, they would have known you could eat the kudzu. <laughs> that's a really good point. <laughs> um, so that was kind of the only thing. And, and Daryl, you did see more of a survival instinct from him as he digs out some worms and eats those and he knows that's protein and moisture and uh, things like that. Still really great. Uh, and finally there was a weather incident because we've been waiting for something like that to happen and good, there was a good old southern tornado. What's worse than a good old southern tornado? A good old southern tornado with zombies. Not quite as campy as the Sharknado. I was going to say, don't say that out loud because <laughs> sci-fi will create a, a whole series. It wasn't quite that campy, uh, but it was pretty awesome. Uh, and then at the end of the episode, which you find out a little bit more tonight, uh, we meet a new character who's evidently been kind of following them. He's clean, he's got gear, he's healthy. Uh, and it appears that he's there to help bring them in to a new group that is surviving and surviving well. But, well, now they are suspicious of him, yeah? Well, they're suspicious of him and he's suspicious of them. Because if you haven't seen their life experiences from their eyes, if 
this is how I, I say it. If you followed Rick and his group one day behind, all you see is him murdering people everywhere he's gone. One day behind the prison, there's just bodies everywhere. Look at all the people yeah. he killed. One, one day behind uh, Woodbury, just bodies everywhere. One day behind at the church, bodies everywhere. That's a really one day behind Terminus, bodies everywhere. One day behind Grady. Killed people. I guess all of that taken out of context. If you didn't know it, they were all acts of defense or rescuing somebody else, you if you're one day behind Rick and his crew, they're a marauding band of murderous <laughs> thugs. So I would they're be, good at killing. I would be pretty suspicious and cautious of, of them as well. That's a good point. Um, so Walking Dead, it's going to be awesome. You guys already know Josh McDermott. Eugene is on his way to XCon. He finally talked a little bit more. Believe me, there's going to be more with his character as, as this season wears on. You know I'm smarter than you. I'm not saying I know, but I know. It's going to happen. I just know things. Comics Couch. Comics Couch. Yes, we told you we we're going to be hopping around. Who knows where the comic books are coming from next? Comics be the, might be upstairs. For could be the know. comics bathroom next time. Comics, Studio B. The comic sauna. The comic sauna. That's not good for comics. Nah, probably not. All right, so what's up first, Steve? Uh, first, let's do this week's gigantic bounty of Harley Quinn yes new 52 covers we talked about this last time so much Harley there's gonna be Harley on all the 52 covers so some of them are great this week we have Teen Titans oh that's very Teen Titan-esque they, they, oh this is cute I like this one the Batgirl one she's showing Kind of a selfie of Harley as she's being arrested. That's, oh. that's pretty hilarious right there and timely. Wonder Woman. Looks like Harley's about to whoop on some Wonder Woman in that one. Which I don't even think she's in the book, but uh, the cover's awesome. Nah. That would be an interesting fight, though. <laughs> this one's nice. Batman and Robin. That's where she belongs. She belongs right there. Right? There you yeah. go. Supergirl. Now, this one's pretty cool. I'm not going to make any comments. You guys see it. I know you see it. We'll just leave it at that. And Superman Wonder Woman. Harley's playing Cupid. Oh, oh everybody needs that. So how many more of these are there left? Um, We should be coming pretty close to the end of the batch. Uh, there will be a few more, but uh, I think we've gotten the bulk <laughs> on the screen. We're here to talk to you about Harlebitis. <laughs> Harlebitis. I wouldn't eat that stuff if it was the fat in a dove bar. Oh, lordy. All right, so get your Harley covers because we know the Harley fans are out there. Oh, Steve, is this a favorite? Steve, you're cherished. Lady Mechanica number four has finally come out after three years of waiting. Benitez. Does this end the, the story? No. <laughs> so there's another three-year gap. Here's what happened. Okay, let's hear the story. What happened was, all right, so uh, we got zero, one, two, and three. And and how long did that? That was a, three years ago? <laughs> About three years ago. <laughs> okay. Um, Everybody got excited. And we had many years of promises of, oh, this year at San Diego Comic-Con, Lady Mechanica number four, it's coming out, it's coming out. Uh, and finally... It has legit come out. I, I said I would believe it when it was in my hand. It's in my hand. It's out. Uh, Benitez has realized that he cannot produce the comic on his own. He has given the project to someone else. So we will have more Lady Mechanica. We will have it in a timely fashion because someone else is doing it and it's going to be great. And I thank him for falling on the sword and allowing someone else to take over the mantle. Don't believe it. Don't, buy, don't believe the hype. 
but buy Lady Mechanica 4 because it might be another And it's three amazing, years. and yeah, you're going to love it. It and might be three more years before you get a five, <laughs> so buy it while you can. Shh. Do not say these things! It will become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Why is it always the ones you like <laughs> <laughs> never come out? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Well, uh, no, this, no. One, this one's so hot, he can't keep it I can't it keep it in my hands. It's amazing. This one I know a little bit about. Silk! Silk from the Spider-Verse. Everyone has been waiting for this comic, and it is out. And it's it's got its own title. It's a number one. It's basically the female Spider-Man, but with some sass. Well, <laughs> Spider-Man's got some sass, too. This is what happens. This is, this is really where Spider-Verse was focused. This is another product of the same spider that bit Peter Parker. That spider got around. That spider clearly was trying to create a dynasty. They, they, they had some issues. <laughs> uh, this is a fanboy service at its finest. Sure. We're going to take sure. Spider-Man, everyone's favorite, and make it a chick. And make it a, a hot, hot chick. chick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's just that's just like go ahead and cash me in. But you know she has an important part to play. She saved the Earth from from alien invaders and the inheritors, the murderous monsters of, right. of evil. Kind of back to Jupiter ascending. Just <laughs> think about that. But you know I don't feel like it's too contrived. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you laugh when you say that, Wilford? Uh, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> It's all going to be fine. The comic's right. going to come out, and it's going to be awesome. If you're a fan of Spider-Man, it's an awesome book. If you're a casual Spider-Man reader, you're probably going to find it a little off-putting. Uh, the, the cover art is great. Well, that was the whole point in the Spider-Verse. Oh, my God. My, my Let's kid. wind out all the spiders and see what we got going, and everybody gets to fight for My, my seven-year-old little girl knows about Venom and Carnage and Manga Spider-Man and there's all kinds of spider and she knows about all of them now because of a new cartoon that he's on Spider-Man oh, and his, yeah. the Spider-Verse friends. I'm sure she's heard of Silk. And it's on like Donkey Kong. So now it's in a comic book and, and you just have to buy it. More Spider-Man the better. Come on. We need plenty of spider titles. I think that's going to wrap up this week's comics couch. Oh. We'll see you next time.